What is up? It is 2.17 a.m. We have some new Shadow Isle cards and a new keyword. Let's get it. This is not going to be my first time going over the cards. I realized when I first recorded it, I was covering the important information. Firstly, new keyword Nightfall. So you get a bonus effect if it's not the first card you've played this round. So, you know, whatever it takes to play it second, that's what you do. And it's usually like a pretty powerful effect. So we have a one mana two one here, the Stargion Onlooker. With its Nightfall effect, you'll be able to give me plus two and Fearsome this round. It becomes a four, one mana four one sometimes. Um, Even if you do get to push, let's say for example, a cheap four damage, it could be a big boost to aggro decks, but it also does mean that we're building into Shadow Isles. And right now Shadow Isles aggro decks aren't too crazy outside of like Endure. And I don't think Endure really wants to run a card like this, right? It's kind of cute. And you could consider it, but you also have to make sure, like this Nightfall kind of wants you to play off curve if you're playing an aggressive deck. And I think the most powerful Nightfall cards will be Nightfall cards that just have a general powerful effect that don't sacrifice your deck building too much. Let's say something like Doom Beast, for example. 3 mana, 3, 2 with Nightfall, drain 2 from the enemy Nexus. This is actually a really strong effect, and I can see this slotting into like Spooky Karma lists and stuff, etc. This doesn't sacrifice deck building too much at all. And every now and then you're going to play a 3 mana 3 2 at some point in the game that will deal 2 heal 2. This is pretty crazy. I think this card's really strong. It has a fair bit of potential. It's not going to necessarily be slotting into your aggro decks, although it might. It definitely might, but it's not going to be something that you always play on curve. The beauty about these Nightfall cards is that the stat lines are kind of not as good generally, but you can still play them if you want without being punished. Obviously, you want to get the Nightfall effect at all costs. But if that requ makes you have to, like, you know, sacrifice your deck building too much, then that becomes a problem. Next up, we have the Dusk Rider. I was just talking about the fact that I think most powerful Nightfall cards will be Nightfall cards that don't impact your deck building. This looks like one that really wants you to uh, dip into the Nightfall mechanic. So Dusk Rider, Fearsome, Nightfall, grant me plus one for each time we've activated Nightfall this game. It's pretty cute. You want this to obviously be played on curve most of the time as a 5 mana card. And you want it to at least have a decent amount of stats. I think if we're playing a 5 mana 5-5 five five for Fearsome, that's okay. But how good is a 5 mana 5-5 five five for Fearsome at some points? It's not as good. The tricky thing about this card is that sometimes you draw it really late into the game. But this card wants to be in an aggressive deck, right? And a big Fearsome unit can sometimes be enough to kind of cheat out a win. But it's going to get dealt with more times than not. And I think there's way faster aggressive decks than what this card's trying to be. Unless we see some crazy Nightfall synergy, then right now, this card doesn't seem that good. However, this card coming up. So 3 mana Passage Unearned, obliterate all units that were summoned but not played this round. This is a card I'm pretty sure that would not have originally been on their like creative list. Because they already pre- like they pre-make these cards right. They've got them ready to go most of the time before the like expansion couple of expansions prior. This card looks like it's been put into the game to be an answer to certain metas. This is a direct answer to Curse Keeper and Blight to Caretaker. It absolutely shuts that down. This card poops on it. Unfortunately, it's in Shadow Isles, which is kind of unironic. But if you play this card over your opponent's Blight or Caretaker Curse Keeper turn, you clear the 4-3 and the Saplings. That's a lot of tempo loss, guys. This card definitely has some potential. It also does kind of deal with harrowing if harrowing becomes too popular. I feel like they're not gonna they're not gonna nerf these certain cards now, but they're gonna give you an answer to them, which you have to be in Shadow Isles. So this card's very interesting. It's probably the highest potential card of this list. But outside of that, I don't think there's too many relevant summoning effects. But it's a pretty it's a pretty cheap card. It's a reasonably cheap card as a tech. I can see this fitting into certain decks. Without a doubt, obviously Shadow Wild is some, so, some sort of like control deck. Like this oftentimes can replace like Grasp of the Undying in certain lists. It's definitely a high potential card, not a sleeper card at all. And it's good that a card like this, a card like this will exist in the game now, even though it is in Shadow Isles, but you know, what it is what it is. But it's, ve it's very much a good answer to a lot of cards. And it's crazy how this one card shuts down harrowing completely like can you imagine your opponent playing harrowing and then you just play passage unearned it's like holy shit man they don't even get the legion grenadier value 
outside of that the cards um like yeah it's a very fringe moment it's gonna be like every one every 20 games it'll win you from doing something ridiculous and the last card we'll talk about is going to be the unroaching encroaching shadow sorry four mana burst speed spell for shadow isles that grants all allies in deck and in hand plus two plus two in ephemeral i don't know if this is what uh ephemeral necessarily wants to actually make it a stronger archetype like because this wants to be played in a deck that literally wants to be more aggressive than the aggressive decks we have right now because the problem with ephemeral is that even burn decks need to chump block and this completely negates chump blocking so you, can, you can't really burn them over the top unless we see some more support for this I think this card is not going to see competitive play it just seems so wacky it's very interesting but extremely wacky now don't get me wrong this is not a card that necessarily will be bad permanently but right now and I'm assuming with this collection of cards it's probably not going to do anything amazing like if it does see any crazy competitive play it's not going to be a full build around card more than it's going to be like a card that slots into certain decks that can kind of draw into this and have an alternate win condition but even then like aggro decks often go into top deck mode kind of early and then like it's a little bit awkward maybe you can kind of play this in some sort of weird overwhelm harrowing deck and it gets a little bit better but then if that becomes really popular your opponent's just gonna play passage unearned and just obliterate all your cards from harrowing um definitely a weird card i don't know how competitive this card's gonna be hey so you guys know the drill if you are new here consider subscribing we're going to be doing some of these card re reveals over and over until the new expansion comes out um don't forget to leave a like get involved jump down in the comments i'll be lurking there all night until i pass out so if you have any questions or you want to kind of throw your ideas out there now is the time get down there i will see you tomorrow